Hey guys, welcome to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel. And if you're into ball pythons like I am, you probably frequently visit MorphMarket.com. And I actually just went over there and I sorted through all the snakes and the total number of snakes for sale and sold are actually 84,000 ball pythons. And as a matter of fact, if you go over there and you're looking through all the different snakes, looking for projects to invest in, what you might not know is there's actually a hidden feature of Morph Market that will unlock an additional 10,000 snakes that you probably haven't seen before and in this video I'm going to show you how to unlock and view those snakes. Okay so here we are on MorphMarket.com <laughs> And I just actually found out about this yesterday, and I was totally blown away. Not only do they have almost 10,000 snakes that I've never seen, they have a lot of new morphs that I've never even heard of that a lot of people are working with that are hidden on Morph Market. So when you go to Morph Market and you sort just for the ball pythons for sale, you can see right here there's 12,442, quite a few ball pythons. But if you actually sort based on all the ones for sale and that have sold there's actually 84,583 ball pythons that were listed on Morph Market and as a matter of fact if you come over here and, and, and what you really need to do to unlock the snakes is there's this little tab right here and if, if most of my viewers are in the United States and we've been looking on here uh, based on our location if you go to Morph market it defaults to the United States as a matter of fact if you click on this little link you can scroll down to where it says Europe and that unlocks all the ball pythons in, uh, in the Europe side of things so right now there's 1391 ball pythons uh, for sale in Europe but if you actually sort the ones that have sold and the ones that are for sale and you sort by the high price that's what I did here there's actually 7224 ball pythons from Europe that just <laughs> this just really blew me away I couldn't even believe it and here is kind of the high-end stuff they're working out over in Europe this is actually a sunset you know I've been thinking about getting into the sunset project here's one that sold in 2017 for 21,000 pounds <laughs> and you're probably thinking well what in the world how much is 21,000 pounds worth in US dollars and I'm glad you asked because I actually have a currency converter over here and that is actually 27,000 411 dollars to jump into the sunset project which is pretty incredible and if you kind of look over here um, there's a lot of stuff that I've never seen for example this one is a pastel stranger they're actually working with a gene called the stranger which I've never really heard of before I haven't even really heard of people working with it and if you kind of scroll down here a little bit they actually have a scaleless classic <laughs> instead of calling them normals you know we just have the wild type gene you know how much is a normal worth a normal is the base wild type ball python they don't actually call them normals they call them classics I like it it's, it's a lot more classic than normal I think this is interesting and here is a pastel leopard stranger head clown Firefly Stranger. <laughs> it's really interesting. They're working with a lot of scaleless. They have some scaleless, completely scaleless stuff that sold here. Here's one that sold for 11,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds. <laughs> it's interesting. And here is a Pastel Stranger, some Sunsets. This is kind of all their high-end stuff that they've, they've had. Here's a Super Enchi NG, Rainbow. So they're working with the rainbow. And here, this is kind of interesting right here. This is what the Stranger looks like right here. It's got a really interesting pattern as far as what I can tell. It has a lot of potential. And if we scroll down to the second page, we can kind of go through. It seemed like every page I looked at, there was some kind of a new morph going on <laughs> over overseas. It's like on the other side of the world, these guys are working on completely different things. And I haven't even been able to unlock the, the, the stuff over here. And I just, I just found out about it, and it really blew me away. Here, they're just selling strangers here, like 7,000 pounds for strangers, which is 
really interesting here is a super vanilla puzzle they're working with the puzzle stuff here is a confusion Mojave Mojave so they're working with the confusion gene which is really interesting I don't think I've known anyone over here in the United States to work with the confusion gene and here's a double hetero <laughs> over here we call it double het I've never heard it called double hetero it's basically heterozygous it's it's interesting they call them uh, classics and heteros it's it's a slightly different language I'd say which is kinda interesting here is what the confusion looks like here on the bottom it's sold for five thousand pounds in 2017 it's kind of interesting here is the third page they have a super hurricane <laughs> I like it this is what the super hurricane looks like it's really interesting I've never seen a hurricane or a super hurricane uh, they have some het sunsets super gravels confusion pastel that's pretty interesting sold for four thousand pounds in 2017 Let's see what else they have down here. Here's a Confusion Black Pastel. Looks like they're working a lot with the Confusion Gene. This is something I really consider getting into. I haven't seen any of these over here in the United States. And that is the Ultramel Pied. And they have, they have a few of them here. Looks like people are working with the Ultramel Pied over in Europe. If we go to the next page... Here is right up, right, right up front, the first one, it's an Enchi Migraine. <laughs> that makes my head hurt. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting name, the Migraine. I haven't seen anybody working with the Migraine gene over here in the United States. And here's some more confusion. Here's some Monarch stuff. The, the, the story behind the Monarch is kind of interesting. It was a guy who just had a couple snakes he was breeding, a few snakes, and he popped out this new gene. And it looks similar to, uh, it's, it's a recessive. It kind of looks like a Caramel Albino or Ultramel. It's just kind of a darker version. He named it the Monarch, which is pretty interesting. And it, monarchs are holding their value pretty good if you're thinking about getting into the, the monarch project. Super gravels, a really powerful breeder, especially if you're going for the highway or freeway stuff. Got a lot of super gravel stuff here. Here is a really interesting Enchi Clown Blade, really reduced, it's really interesting. A Crystal Pied, I've never actually seen a crystal with, with, mixed with a pied, it's just an all-white snake. It's, it's pretty interesting. And they're working with the tri-stripe gene. Very interesting. Tri-stripes. Looks like they're holding their price. $2,500. 2,500 pounds. <laughs> Here's what the base hurricane looks like. Sold for 2,700 pounds. Uh, it's really interesting. The hurricane. I, I like the pattern. It looks like it has a lot of potential. Uh, let's see what else they have here. This is just this just like opens up a brand new morph market. Look at this. This is an Orbit Pastavi, <laughs> the Orbit gene. That is pretty wild. Let's see what else they have. So I just kind of went page to page. It seemed like every page I looked at, uh, especially these first few pages, they had something that was interesting. Here is a Highway Zaloc. X-A-L-O-C. <laughs> Highway Zaloc. I have never heard of that one. That is just really crazy. Zaloc. Uh, let's see what else they have here. Uh, let's see. They have a Super Pastel Monarch. It's interesting with the Super Pastel does to the monarch. Let's go to the next page. Uh, see what else they have. I know it seems like on every page here they had uh, something interesting. They have the VPI Azanthic Pides, which are which are pretty hot through here. I haven't seen. It seemed like the 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 Azanthic Pides were pretty hot for a while in the U.S. and it pretty much died out. I don't know really anyone who's working with the Azanthic Pides anymore. Here's a bamboo cinnamon. It's interesting what the cinnamon does to the bamboo gene. It's really, really interesting. I like it. Then the tri-stripe stuff, scaleless heads. Looks like they're working on a lot of the same stuff over here. Some more heteros. <laughs> here is a Horizon Cinnamon. This is really interesting. And back if you looked at some of my uh, the, 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 the 45 new morphs coming, coming, you know, some of the new stuff coming out. A lot of that, it looks like they're actually working on a lot of that stuff over here in Europe. Let's see what else we have. Another VPI Azanthic Pied.
more Monarch stuff. Some more VPI Azanthic Pies. Spotnose Clown, that's another project I've been thinking about getting into, is getting maybe a male Spotnose Clown. I love the what the Spotnose does with the Clown. Here's some of the Hurricane stuff. Look at how busy the patterns are. That is really amazing. I love the Hurricane stuff. Still holding pretty good pricing, looks like. Uh, 1,900 pounds. <laughs> Probably over $2,000 in the U.S. dollars. Let's see what else they have here. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the next page. Here is another one. Gobi Enchi. <laughs> Look what the Gobi gene does. That's really crazy. And then the Enchi usually is a really reducing pattern. You know, it really reduces the pattern. So this is a reduced Gobi, which is really interesting. Never really seen anybody work with a Gobi. See what else they have here. Black Pastel Monarch. Look at how beautiful the Black Pastel and the Monarch combines. That's just really stunning. Bamboo Phantom. I've never seen that before. There's a lot of stuff I've never seen before. And let's see. This is the last page over in Europe. They have, let's see, they're working with the toffee. This one's interesting here. It's just a straight migraine. This is what the base migraine looks like and here is a lesser blaze I've never heard of the blaze either it's just it just keeps going and going all this stuff that's like new and then this one here is a super dot I've never even heard of the dot much less the super dot unless they call it the DOT I'm not sure if it's DOT or dot <laughs> I'm probably killing these names because I've never heard of most of this stuff and then this is actually so this was actually another 7224 ball pythons from Europe and you can actually go into here and instead of Europe you can go to South Africa and over here in this last tab I actually have the ball pythons from the South African regions all that have sold and that are for sale there's another 2965 and I was kinda of looking through a lot of this stuff and it looked like there was a lot of this pretty much the standard combos the standard genes from the US and I looked through maybe six or seven pages and I didn't really see anything that was uh, like a new gene coming out. They do have some really cool combos that I've never seen before, but not necessarily any brand new genes like they do over in Europe. So that pretty much unlocks your 10,000 extra snakes on Morph Market. Okay, so let me show you what else I have going on. Tomorrow is the reptile show. I'm getting ready, getting ready to pack up all my hatchlings and, sh and head to the reptile show. Reptilian Nation in Denver, Colorado, February 23rd and 24th. 4th 2019 hope to see you there and this is kind of what I have going on this is my display case that is from ARS and this is kind of how I have everything set up I still have to figure out some of the pricing and that is just one case I actually have four more cases here it completely fills an eight foot table with this display and I actually had one question from one of my viewers and the question was why can't you put more than one snake in a, in, a, in a particular tub. Why do you have one snake per tub? And you can actually put more than one snake in certain occasions. So for example, when I'm breeding, I pair up my male and my female and I'll keep them together for a while. The problem is, is if you were always keeping a male and a female together, they would essentially stop eating because they would go into breeding mode, which you don't really want. To, and, you know, I kind of made that mistake at the beginning. I started, you know, I had limited amount of glass glass aquariums and I actually paired up some of my uh, some of my king snakes when I first started and you pair them up and they go off of food and if they're not ready to breed they don't breed and they don't eat and then you really run into problems where your snakes get thinner and thinner and kind of waste away so you definitely don't want to pair up snakes outside of the breeding season and I've actually seen people pair up females and some people say you can have more than one female per tub if you put males together they'll actually fight and I actually accidentally put two males together when I was breeding and let me tell you they fight pretty hard with a whole rack seems like it's shaking so you definitely don't want to put males together you can uh, I would say under certain circumstances put females together but keep in mind if you're feeding you still have to separate to feed which is problematic especially if you had a lot of snakes 
paired up multiple females per tub. You'd have to separate them all, feed them all, and then you'd have to put them all back together. It would really be a hassle versus just keep them all separated. So I kind of want to show you some of my, I don't think I've shown you a lot of my female breeders. I thought I'd just pull a couple tubs and kind of show you some of these, some of these snakes. So it's kind of, we're right in the middle of the breeding season. And here is a big lemon blast. This one actually, I'm pretty sure a lot of these have already ovulated. Some of them are, were too thin and I wasn't actually pairing them up. This is a pastel. Here's my pied female who refuses to eat still. <laughs> She's driving me crazy, she won't eat. Here's my albino head pied who still hasn't eaten since she laid eggs. She was the last one to actually lay eggs. Here's my pied female number two. I actually paired her up and she wouldn't eat and wouldn't eat and wouldn't eat. And finally, I figured out she will actually eat live rats. And she started eating on live rats. Here's another pastel female. I'm pretty sure this one, um, uh, this one's still eating, hasn't ovulated yet. I have some normals. Here's the free normal female that I actually paired up this year. This is the one I actually got on Craigslist for free and she's been really, she started pounding rats like crazy. Now she's off feed. I think she's getting ready. She's building eggs and getting ready to, to lay eggs. This one actually looks like she's going into a shed and it's another normal female. She actually ovulated. Here's a lesser female up here. And this girl, she stopped eating. She's actually breeding with my bamboo and they lock tails, but since she really hasn't been eating, I don't think that this one's actually gonna lay eggs just because she hasn't been eating. So that's the, that's the hard thing. You have, to, you have to get enough food into them to lay eggs. Here's another normal, big, huge normal. And she is actually still eating. So when they're usually when they're eating, they're still building eggs. Here's a female albino up here. This one's not het pied. And she's been eating really well. So she pretty much laid eggs almost at the same time as my other female. She started eating really well. These both of the females have the year off. And then my biggest one down here, I keep <laughs> I keep peeking in here every day to see if she's laying eggs. She's gonna lay eggs first, I think. And someone's actually saw her on one of my videos just uh, last week and they're like, man, that snake is obese. And actually, she is ready to lay eggs. So <laughs> she's not obese. She hasn't eaten about three months and she's gonna definitely be the first to lay eggs. And a big girl like that, she could probably lay about 15 eggs. And then this female pinstripe, she is actually was one of my pickiest eaters and she wouldn't eat and wouldn't eat. And all of a sudden, just out of the blue, she started pounding her ass like crazy. She's putting on some really good weight and um, I didn't pair her up this year because she just was so skinny. But it looks like for, this, for next year, she'll really be a good breeder. And here's a lesser. This one actually has the ear off and still won't eat since she laid eggs. This is where I got some of my... Um, some of my bamboo lessers from this girl. She's a really pretty snake and just, she just, you know, after they lay eggs, sometimes they're, they're really stubborn to get back on food. But this is really, if, if she'll start eating again, I'll definitely pair her up next year. Okay, so there you have it. If you are obsessed with Morph Market, this will give you another 10,000 snakes to go through and it'll keep you busy for at least another few weeks. So thanks for watching and I will see you hopefully at the Reptile Show tomorrow.